Hello and welcome to Wind Up's first ever travel guide. This one is Champagne and I'm your host, Campbell Williams. Champagne, or Champagne as the French tend to call it, is one of our absolute favourite places to visit. It's the closest to the UK of all the major wine producing regions. It's only 170 miles from Calais, so up three hours in the car if you've jumped across by ferry or Eurotunnel. And it's only about 80 miles from Paris, uh, which is a 45 minute train ride if you fancy a little day trip out if you're spending a few days uh, in the capital. Champagne is a beautiful region with rolling hills adorned with vineyard after vineyard. There you'll hear tales of legendary individuals. Champagne Charlie, that was the name, the surname of Charles Heitzig when he started his business in 1851. And he became a legend uh, in his lifetime. And the American people called him Chef and Charlie. You may meet unique characters who combine winemaking and art into a treat for several senses. And of course, you'll see Frenchmen at work with the obligatory cigarette in mouth and dog in tow. But wherever you go in the region, you're probably going to be based out of one of the two major towns, Rance and Epernay. Rance is, uh, is always mispronounced uh, by myself in the past as well as Reem or Reims. Um, it's neither. It, it is Rance. Uh, Rance rhymes with France. And that's the, the capital of the region, by far the largest city. Uh, Epernay, by contrast, is a little bit uh, a little bit smaller, a little bit more understated. Neither one of them is exactly nightlife central uh, by design. Uh, Rance has got a few more bars. Uh, both have got cracking restaurants, beautiful architecture, great cathedral in Rance as well. Well worth uh, having a proper look around both of these places. Lots of nice restaurants, lots of nice cafes and squares. Rance and Epernay are also the main home of the so-called Grand Marks. This is the small group of elite wine producers who are known the world over. The major labels and brands that you'll recognise immediately. Moet et Chandon is the big dog. You know, one in ten bottles of wine bought anywhere in the world is a Moet. You should be immediately familiar with the black label of Lanson or the yellow label of Feuve. Others prefer Tatanger or Tattinger, as it's known in some parts of Glasgow. Uh, for me, Krug is top of the quality pile. They make the best prestige champagnes, in my opinion. But my personal favourite is Charles Eidsek, who have the best blend of quality and price when it comes to their famous champagnes. The stock in trade of the Grand Marks is their non-vintage cuvee. Here, cuvee just means one type of wine in a range of wines or cuvees from a specific producer. This is their most famous house wine. It's the bottles that will be most familiar to you. And the way they produce these is quite interesting. They've all got master blenders called Chef du Cave and in order to create that house style they take multiple different wines from different vintages, they blend them together, taste them carefully so that year in year out every bottle of Veuve or every bottle of Moet or every bottle of Lanson tastes the same as it would have done last year or five years ago or ten years ago. This is a heck of a skill. It's unique in the world of winemaking, pretty much, and it means they need an awful lot of wine. If you need an awful lot of wine, you need an awful lot of grapes. So whilst the Grand Marks do grow some of their own wines, they buy huge bulk of grapes from specialist farmers, guys who don't make their own champagnes, they're purely growers, they sell in bulk to other people who turn their grapes into their own house champagnes. Move away from the wealthier towns and prestige brands and the grandeur fades a little, replaced with a far more rustic feel. Smaller towns, 
people making fizz in their houses and growing grapes in their gardens. In every village, you'll see name after name of producers you've never even heard of. We're very much in farmer country now, but we're also in the backyard of my favourite people to visit in the region, grower producers. Grower producers are little known in most places, but they are starting to grow in popularity. These guys grow their own grapes and make their own wines, and they're as dedicated to the land as they are to the cellar. Here you'll meet passionate winemakers trying to make the best out of their terroir, the combination of soil, weather, place and producer that's unique to them. There are many different ways of making champagne and you can have a, a, well, a nice blend that makes something consistent from one year to another. Um, you can have a, a, a very different approach, like we don't buy grapes, so we cannot blend from many different parts of champagne. So we really focus on our terroir. It's very easy. <laughs> we try to follow the big boss nature. You'll also meet people pioneering new ways of making wine in the region. I think if you're curious, maybe you might prefer a wine grower champagne like Clermont Bernie. Ultimately on Wind Up, we want to tell you the stories of the producers, large and small, around the world and the tales about the wines that they make. So stay tuned for more producer profiles and wine tastings from Champagne. And if you do get the chance to visit the region, go and see some Grand Marks, but also try and look up some grower producers because it's a completely different vibe. There's nothing quite like visiting somebody's house to see where they make the wine and how they make the wine and look at the stark contrast between those guys and the, the huge historic calves of some of the most famous names in the wine world. Stay tuned for more from Champagne and other regions. And don't forget, don't get wound up, get wind up.